to Mezababa Trinity. It's a pretty awesome amp, actually. Um, beautifully made. I mean, the Italians, they know how to, they know how to put something together, don't they, and make it look good. It is well made. It's a beautiful amp. I mean, the fit, the fit and finish on this thing um, is one of the best I have seen. Um, the PCB design and layout is also it's very well done. It's beautifully made on the inside. Um, and I think that, you know, what the guys there have done with this with respect to integrating some fantastic modern uh, digital MIDI control and switching in with what is a pretty classic three-channel amp, done an amazing job. Um, if you know anything about these, um, you might know that it is pretty heavily inspired by the Slow 100, the old Soldano, right? So Channel 1, Channel 3 are very close to the Slow um, in terms of design. And what they've done is inserted, I guess, a Channel 2 that kind of sits in between um, the traditional Channel 1 and Channel 3 of the Soldano with a, you know, um, three-game stage kind of cathode file and more classic kind of Hot Rod Marshall style setup in Channel 2. This amp actually came in because of um, a ground loop issue. Now, it's the second one of these that I have seen that had the exact same issue, right? This video is really set out to demonstrate what the issue is and how I resolved it. Now, um, in doing that, I discovered another pretty interesting um, design feature, or I'm gonna call it a design flaw. So just like a good Italian sports car, it's beautifully made, um, it can be pretty dangerous as well, right? So um, stick around for the video, you'll see what I mean when I go through and um, fix it, this ground loop. All right, well, I've got this Trinity on the bench here, right? Look, it's a nicely made amp. In fact, I'd call it beautiful. <laughs> it's really, it is nicely made, right? Um, it's a really well laid out PCB. Um, and you know, nice components, the detailed work on the pot wiring, the jack, you know, the speaker outputs and so on, the way that the power tubes, uh, heaters wide, it's very slow like. This has absolutely been inspired by a Soldano in terms of construction method. Um, I know the PCB on a Soldano does not have, uh, preamp tube mounted sockets but nonetheless there's a lot of similarities in here in terms of the way the amp is built although I will give credit to this Trinity in terms of a lot of the additional features um, that the amp provides right so over here you can see a lot of the uh, the MIDI based switching and control so it's got you know nice digital control over the relay switching um, which is something you'll never find in a Soldano. And I do know, because I have look, looked at one of these before, Channel 1 and Channel 3 on these Trinities is very close to a slow Channel 1 and Channel 2. Um, very, very close. Now, to the topic at hand, right, um, I am just going to test this ground problem again. So I've got the amp running into a speaker cabinet, which is uh, here in the workspace. So let me take the amp out of standby. I'm bringing up the volume here, I'm on channel three. You probably can't hear that, but I've got the, um, the amp running into my speaker cab here in the workshop space. And I can hear a little bit of high gain hiss coming from that cab. What I've got here is the ground probe, or the ground clip, I should say, from my oscilloscope probe, right? So this is a ground reference, um, which if I connect to the ground on the amp here, it shouldn't make any difference, right? I, I worked on so many amps in here and I connect this ground probe, try ground clip into the amp to test things all the time. But check this out. It's 
pretty obvious what's happening there, right? So as soon as this amp, a second ground reference, the amp goes into a ground loop situation. Okay, so why is that? So what I've discovered um, with these things, and I've noticed this when I worked on one previously, is that the whole amp is actually only grounded in one spot. Um, and that spot is at the input jack. So, a couple of problems here, right? Number one is that even the power connector, this is the IEC power connector, right? Where you would plug in your, your mains. The ground lug on this IEC connector is not connected to chassis. It's incredibly dangerous, right? Golden rule number one, if you're an amp builder, we're working on one of these things, first thing you do when you're wiring up is you run a separate um, wire from that ground pin to the chassis on its own. You want that ground, your chassis always has to be grounded because you get a fault condition in this amp that puts live voltage onto the chassis if that chassis is not grounded, the thing's live, right? So when you touch it, you'll be ground. You will get electrocuted and badly. If the chassis is grounded and you get a fault condition in the amp that causes the chassis to go live, it's going to flick. It's going to trigger the um, your meter box straight away, right? Safe. That to me is not safe, and I'll show you why. Okay. So now I've got my meter set up, right, for continuity testing, and I'm going to put this pin, so this probe, on the earth pin of my power connector, right, and you can see we're all earthed here. The chassis is earthed. No worries, right? I grab onto one of these tube sockets here. Earth. Now, watch what happens. If I undo this nut here on the input socket where you plug your guitar in, right? This is where you plug your guitar in. I'm taking that nut off and I'm just going to move this socket out. So there you go, it's just hanging free now. And it's no longer connected. It's no longer touching the chassis. All right? Earth pin. So the preamp is still connected, right? Because we have a wire from this earth pin, it, that wire runs onto a ground pad on the PCB, and the PCB is connected to uh, you know this ground reference here on the pots. All right, so there's we've got a connection there, but I'm not connected to the chassis anymore. All right, there's no ground reference on this chassis anymore. So, if over time, you're plugging your guitar in and out of this input jack, right, as you would do, and that nut works loose, and the, and the jack then, you know, loses its connection to the chassis, this chassis is no longer grounded. Good luck. So, after a little bit of trial and error, this is my third... Uh, attempt, right, or third different configuration, I should say. We've been basically trying a few different things over the last 10 to 15 minutes. I think I've solved it. Okay, so um, what's what was basically happening is we've got our ground reference here at the input jack, right, which is the ground for the whole amp. It's the audio ground. Okay, and because of the way that the uh, the ground pin on the on the power inlet was connected directly to 
the ground PCB, right? So it's connected directly to the audio ground. This is where we're getting our ground loop, right? So we've got a ground, uh, a ground reference here at the preamp, um, and then the ground reference here for the amp connected directly to the audio ground on the PCB. So what I've done to solve this problem is I've taken the ground reference uh, that was going from this pin to the PCB and as I demonstrated before the only way the chassis was getting a ground reference is via the input jack. I've disconnected that wire from this ground PCB and I'm temporarily running a ground reference directly to a bolt on the chassis. All right? This is my yellow alligator clip here. Just for testing purposes, right? You've got to be careful when you're doing this stuff. Um, I'm not going to drill into the chassis and insert a new ground lug until I know I've solved the problem. And that's what I'm going to do though, right? So the way I'm going to fix this problem permanently and make the amp safer, quite frankly, is to drill, insert with a star washer a, a separate ground lug and permanently wire the uh, ground reference from the power inlet onto the chassis away from the audio ground. They obviously do connect eventually, right, because the audio ground is connected to chassis ground. But by having two ground references here on the PCB, we've destroyed the star grounding scheme. Now let me demonstrate. First thing I noticed, the amp's out of standby here. I'm on channel 3, which was the worst. You know, the ground uh, the ground loop was at its worst on channel 3, the higher gain channel. First thing I noticed is the amp's way quieter. After, uh, before, even when I had no, I didn't put the separate ground reference on to, to induce the ground loop, I could hear a lot of hiss out of the amp even when that volume was only at about 9 a, you know, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Now I'm winding it way past midday, right up to 3 p.m. before I can hear the hiss. All right, so it's quietened the amp down nicely. The owner of this amp will be happy with that, I am sure. Now, here's my ground reference which as I showed before as soon as I connected it to this ground rail here ground loop city here's my volume midday 3 p.m. it's the same See? All right. ground loop gone freaking awesome all right, I'm going to make this permanent. Job done. So just to implement uh, the fix here for the grounding, right? These, I'm going to pull this out. These two ground wires here, which were connected to the ground pin on the IEC power, um, they're already soldered together, right? So I've kept them there, but I've just um, Tap them off safely with some heat shrink on there, a couple of layers of heat shrink, so they're all nice and secure there. And I've drilled a hole through the chassis, just in the corner there, or back from the corner, and I've got a 4mm uh, bolt with star washers on either side, and a ground lug, which is also a, you know, a star uh, washer and nice, nicely secured in there, nice and tight with a, with a nut. And this is going to be my new ground reference to, ch to the chassis from the earth pin on the power, right? This is going to be wired straight from there to there. I'm not going to rely on an input jack. So it's safer. It also solves the uh, ground loop problem. So I'll solder that in. We'll give it another test and uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so uh, the re-earthing is done. Okay, so I'll show a detailed picture of this, but I've run just a piece of green uh, Teflon wire from that new 
ground solder lug, right, which I drilled through the chassis directly to the ground pin and a little bit of heat shrink there. So there you have it guys. This amp is now a lot quieter than it was and um, is able to be set up in a number of different scenarios without that horrible ground loop coming into play. In fact, when I first um, got the amp here and connected it up to my rack system here and so on in the studio, just so I could you know, start getting a feel for what the amp was all about, um, it, the ground loop was unbearable. And on, it's interesting, channel one, you don't notice it. In fact, it doesn't come into play. Channel two is okay as well and, until you put the boost on and then the ground loop would come into play and you could really hear it. Channel three was just pretty much unusable, right? And you can hear it now. I mean, I'm on channel three here. There's a bit of hiss there that you'd expect from a high gain amp. There ain't no ground loop, that's for sure. You move to channel two uh, with the boost on. Boost off. It's quite as, right? So I'm pretty confident that the uh, ground loop fixes have made a difference and this amp is now good to go. And it's a hell of a lot safer than it was um, when it came in. All right, guys, if you've got one of these, um, maybe take it to a tech, get them to look at it, and maybe this video might be helpful for them. Playing with grounds and so on on your ramp is probably not the safest thing to do as a DIY project, but hopefully this video um, might give you some insights as to why your Trinity might be behaving the same way. Get it done by a professional. Cheers, guys.